And you're going to see a lot of FOMO tomorrow if this happens. We're starting to see it today with some of the other names. Okay, folks, we got a lot to go over, so let's just jump right into it. First and foremost, Tesla. Tesla broke out today based upon the Gigafactory, and you can see this pretty clean breakout over this 947.77 level, and we just pushed all day long. You can see it pretty clean when you drill down into this on a 15-minute chart. Something we've been playing around with for a week, but again, bought it here again in the trading room. Options as well. Even the little juke where it looked like it was going to pull back, which got you out of the trade if you were just using a 15-minute stop on a lower low, right? So if you were just using the lower low of the 15-minute, even this got reversed here at the end of the day, which is extremely powerful. You are a little frothy here in the market. Clone oscillator measures breath. So advancing versus decline. See this level right here? This is why we're looking a little frothy and why you're starting to see some of the froth pop up. So if we're looking at breath versus where we were on breath just a very short time ago, you can see how it expanded greatly. Now, if you look at that level based upon that on where some of the other peaks in the market were, you could see clearly where we pulled back. This is a sign that we might be due for a rest. In other words, so this is what we're seeing right now. So in other words, from an advanced decline standpoint, we can see a certain amount of names go up. They can't all go up. And if you compare this to what you're seeing out there on the S&P, you can see that this can sometimes tell you that you're getting somewhat toppy. So please keep this in mind. But I do think that we are in a position where if this makes a higher high tomorrow, you're gonna to see the froth continue, right? No one's gonna ring a bell and tell you when we're a little toppy and we're gonna come back in and pull back. But all you're looking for tomorrow out of this trade is to get over at 998. If you get over 998 tomorrow, we're probably going to squeeze. And then if you start looking at levels, you know, you don't really hit any resistance to you're at about 1059. And you're going to see a lot of FOMO tomorrow if this happens. We're starting to see it today with some of the other names. Stay to the end because there is a lot to get into with the indexes as well. Now, ZIM was one that we were all waiting for the dividend and the dividend to come out. It's one, if you follow along in the newsletter and there is a link in the description to follow along for free, uh, this is where we started buying it at 77 and a half. We're at 77 and a quarter. Plus, we got the dividend of $17 today. So obviously, we're up over 20%. Pretty happy. Just watch these levels. Remember, even wedge lines and upper channels, they can flip and become resistance points. For whatever reason, it works. And we stopped right there. Now, that could be also correlated to where the breakout took place here. Nonetheless, this is where you stopped. So you're going to have to focus on that area make sure you get over but if you get over that area, 78.10, expect this to push and gap fill. You're seeing a lot of gap fill trades out there. I'm going to give you two examples on one that worked perfectly today. This one, I took UPST. This was an easy trade today. But as soon as you broke down, reversed, you gap filled, right? You're seeing these all over the place. So these kinds of trades, when you see them, just be aware of them. Another great one uh, that we did yesterday was this Bank America, where you just, they gap you down, and then you take you right there, and they gap fill. So you're seeing a lot of gap fills, which shows me that you're seeing money come in the market. But we, we are looking a little frothy, and we're going to get into that. But if you talk about froth, you're seeing names like GME. They're starting to pop. And, you know, when you start seeing the mean names start getting involved again, you can trade them. And you can trade them and you can make money and they can move. But you have to understand why they're moving and what that says about the environment that you're in. There's two things. One, it tells you that you're getting a little toppy. We saw that a little bit earlier, right? With the a McClellan oscillator. But what's really important is how long does it last? How far does that oscillator go? We don't know yet. You have to play the hand that you're dealt. You have to trade what's in front of you. Everything else is just conversation. Right? We can all have opinions, but th that's not how we get paid. 125.79. If you flip this tomorrow, and I was short this, I would have I would have enough, right? So if you start thinking about how the traders are going to think on the other side, that's how they're going to think. They're going to start thinking, I've had enough, I want out. Close the position, but you would think that you could squeeze because I don't really see any major, anything major up to 167. Now you could have some resistance here but at this 135 level, but I don't think that's gonna hold. I think you're gonna be able to go right through it and head to this 167 by the end of the week if, if this starts picking up steam. Too many people are still short this. And speaking of that whole sector, if you take a look at AMC, let's clean this up. So if you take a look at AMC, did the same thing. Interestingly enough, these are the kinds of trades that are working. 
What do I mean by that? Stocks that are breaking up above the 50, you have the RSI crossing the 50 line and you have a perfect wedge line. And if you can get up and over this level, let me show you this and make a higher high. These are all the ones that are moving. This little pattern that I'm showing you, 1943, but this little pattern, when you get over the 50, the RSI crosses the 50, then you make a higher high after a descending wedge. That's what's working in today's environment. So 1943 could be resistance, but I would just use 1891. If you get over that, see how you act. If you close below the 50 day, I would consider getting out. Again, these are trades. When we run these top five and five videos, these are short term trades. That's all we're looking at here. As I stated a little bit earlier, we are looking a little frothy if you look at the McClellan oscillator. So now this has been a fan favorite that we've done exceptionally well with. If you started with me from the beginning of when we started this, we started buying this at like 480. And we've been trading around it ever since with a core position. Came to the 50 day. We all know that institutions buy at the 50 day. Boom, it hung in there. Flipped the 21. But you have to respect the hammer. Now, the interesting thing about this hammer is this happened on a day when energy and oil stocks were going down. That leads me to believe that you're seeing more buying pressure than originally thought, and people are starting to understand the dividend and how strong the dividend can be. 1357, that's what you're looking to flip tomorrow. But longer term, and I'm looking at this multi year, but there's a short term trade here. If you break this level, look at that close. Okay, if you break this level, you're most likely going to test back up to this 15 level, 1560. That gets you a solid 20%. But take a look at this on the monthly. This is really what we have to work with. This was during the Iraq war, war when U.S. invaded Iraq. And when you start having a shift in the power structure, oil gets more expensive to cost to manufacture everything, right? When that takes place, oil prices go up. This is a royalty trust from BP. They throw off the royalties of this one bay into it. During that entire multi-year move, based upon what transpired, this went to $77. Now people say, oh, that can't possibly happen again. They can increase and decrease the dividend in this trust. It most certainly can happen again. And you know they keep the dividend low, at, right, when they're not making any money. And then as they make money, they increase the dividend. And they can kind of increase the percentage of the dividend. They have a lot of wiggle room with this trust. So you can see a lot of movement here long term. It's definitely one that I would look at. And especially think about the fact that you want to find the anomalies. Which one came out and started hitting you know, some more recent highs off basis? This one did out of the group. Now, I said we'd start talking a little bit more about the what's going on. And I'd like to address this with the cues. I'm not saying that I think that you are at a top. I'm saying that we might need a rest. Why am I saying that? You have bounced from this level of 13, <laughs> 317 here, right? You're up 12% in a week, okay? That's a huge move. If you take a look here and look at these moves, right? You're right over key levels, okay? 8% IWM, right? You're sitting right on that key level. Let me remove this, but you're sitting right on that key level and you flipped it. So just watch these levels, watch them very closely. We're starting to see a little tired. We saw, we seemed a little tired in semiconductors today. We tried to get over and we didn't. So if the leading sector is not going to be able to stay over the 50 emphatically and stay over the 200, it might be a little bit time for a rest. Uh, there's just some other signs of that as well. But most important for me is just watch this. It does not mean that we're heading right back down. But what it means to me is that we're putting ourselves in a position where we could absolutely roll back down and give us another buying opportunity. So just watch these 50 day moving averages. I think they're pretty substantial and I really think they're worth your time to pay attention to. But I think we look great. I'm happy with the move. I'm happy with what we see going on. But you really just you can assume based upon where you are with certain oscillators that we just went over that you're putting yourself in a position where you could pull back and it would frankly be very healthy.